It really looks bad, I know. All right, oh, all right, so here you go. It's loose from the case right now. A fuses uh, that goes here, but I noticed that none of these fuses controls uh, So power, it's getting to the fuse box and the relays. Relays are trying to... And it's actually mid-level here. Up, now gives me a 12 volts negative. And if I press down, gives me a 12 or 13 volts positive. All right, so it's working. Looks like problem. Hello, YouTube. So this video here is gonna be just me trying to fix my steer drive pump. So I have it right now unconnected here. And first of all, if you ever get in a boat ramp coming back from a, you know, a, a trip out of thing like in the lake, and if your steer drive doesn't go up, you may have to do some quick tips uh, on how to pull this up so you can drive back to your home and then fix the issue. So the easy fix is really to unbolt uh, or actually not unbolt, but you got a pin that goes here and here and this holds the rod right here. So this is the piston that moves the steer drive up and down. Right here, it's where the pump that moves the hydraulics is located. I believe that this could be, uh, you know, not working uh, or something like that because I can't make this go uh, move up and down. So let me go through the steps I'm taking on trying to figure out why this or this pump is not working to move this uh, piston up and actually in the end lift this whole stair unit here. Again, I'm working on a Stingray uh, bolt. I believe it's a 2008 bolt. Uh, was out of the lake yesterday when I pulled back to dock and get the the boat up in the trailer. I could not make this work. So what I'm doing here, first of all, you need to check a couple of uh, electrical functions of uh, the boat. Right here is the right behind the engine. That's where you have the relays and some of the fuses here. And underneath, <laughs> Underneath the panel here, you also have a fuses uh, that goes here. But I noticed that none of these fuses controls uh, the steer drive. So there's the, the there is the horn, navigation lights, and a couple of other things here. But none of these really controls uh, the steer drive that's over there. Uh, if you notice, you can actually move up and down here. And that's what should drive the motor there. I'm going and looking from uh, this side. There's a bunch of wires here uh, that actually, um, you know, do all the electrical functions. Everything is here, it's working here. But I noticed that there are a couple of wires here for some reason that are not connected to anything. So maybe this come unplugged from somewhere because again, there is a gauge here. And let me show, show you the gauge. This gauge it tells you how high the steer drive is. Right now it's showing up position and it's actually mid-level here. I will show you where is the sensor that picks up the position here on, on the back of the, of the boat. So I know the, the water harness travels here because it needs to send signal from this all the way back to this fuse box and these relays and there is also a up and down uh up and down button here and if i click nothing is happening there but look in here the sound that it makes in one of the relays here i'll be very quiet so you can hear So power, it's getting to the fuse box and the relays. Relays are trying to, you know, to actuate. It feels like it's working because you can hear the movement. 
and then the problem is that uh, the the motor the electrical motor that drives those uh, fluids there it's not working so i i noticed that this is kind of working but i will maybe purchase a couple of relays and replace those all of these fuses are good i remove them and they are good you got to just see if they are you know uh, uh in, in good shape and going back to the back of the boat once again clicking there nothing happens and right here what, what's gonna probably be my next move is to remove this pump there are six uh, bolts hard to see here but there are one and two in the other side three four i think there are six bolts and you can remove this pump out of this location and then uh, verify why it's not working I was telling you about the position uh, of the steer drive and the gauge. I believe this is the, the, the device that actually measures the position. Uh, I see a couple of wires here. These wires goes back into the boat and connects to that gauge. And just to show you if that gauge is working, let's make, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to lower this unit here and then we'll be able to see if the gauge is moving right now it's kind of in the middle so let me put this in the tripod right here i need some some hands going here i'll just lower this again this is probably gonna be heavy but not too heavy all right so i just lowered this unit here let's see if the gauge uh, change it after I, I lower this and here you have it you have the gauge showing that that it's now instead of being up here it's down right here so I believe this is really working uh, I will make I will push it up again and let's see if this goes up so that makes me believe that the gauge is working really the motor it's not I'll get this up. Again, this is not heavy, not heavy at all. You can do by yourself. Just lock in place right here. It's in the limit, the maximum can go up. And going back, wow, see it's up not showing quite as you know in, into the limit but it's right there so this gauge is working the relay is not working once more let's try i'll probably have to remove that pump so i'll come back with an update but for now this is what's going on need to fix this all right thank you for watching uh again i will come with an update if this at least have helped you on investigating the issue leave me a comment ask a question you know like or dislike consider subscribing but i will get back for sure with a, a way to fix this thank you guys have a great day bye all right coming here with an update i was able to identify that the motor it's probably what's uh burned at this time i was able to identify out of all of this big mess here that these uh two wires here which connects to that connector right there you mean this this one if I pull that connector, it goes straight, the wire goes straight to in the back right there, which is actually the location where the, <coughs> the pump is. Uh, so I unplugged that. I wanna make sure that the power is actually getting to the motor. So I plug these uh, two probes right here and these two wires. The probes are coming here. Right now it shows zero, you know, uh, volts. And remember that when I was pressing here, up and down, 
I could hear the relay. So relay is actually working well. Now that I have that those probes coming right here and show zero volts, when I press up, now gives me a 12 volts negative. And if I press down, gives me a 12 or 13 volts positive. So negative and positive here, it determines the direction of the, the motor would spin and changing the direction, you actually change if it goes up or, or down. So yeah, with this, it's a pretty much guarantee that unfortunately that motor is not good. So it's going to be a challenge uh, to fix that because I'll have to remove this motor. Power is getting there, but it's not moving. Okay, so in this clip here, I already unbolt those six bolts. I didn't record because this is kind of a, a narrow area here. But basically, once you remove those six, and I was able to do this with these tools right here. So anyone have this, it, it has a space where you can you can use this to remove so not a big issue so once i remove that here's the the unit so this entire unit here can be very expensive if you want to purchase the original volvo penta unit right i don't know if it's a thousand dollars or whatever so it's expensive but the issue we know right it is the motor the motor is the only part that's not working here. Everything else here, it's working. So I don't know if uh, what ca caused this to go bad. If it was maybe oil. I see that there is kind of a lot of oil everywhere here. Maybe, maybe it was running without oil uh, in this unit here. I don't know. But now I need to remove this motor out of the casing here. I don't know what's going to happen once I unbolt this, but I will anyway. Hopefully the fluid doesn't leak everywhere because if it does, I'll have to learn how to put the fluid back on and and you know, get all the all the air out. So this is probably going to be a challenge, but there is no other way to remove the motor instead of uh, removing these two bolts. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And let's see how it goes. I'll try to record now in the tripod. All right, let's go. So it's a four millimeter bolt. So I'm just going to lose this. I should actually look for some videos before doing this, but you know, I just like to explore and see what happens. There's this metal cable here. All right, oh, all right, so here you go. It's loose from the case right now. Get some oil in here. Let's see if I can look at, okay, so this is the back. I'll do a very good clean right here. Okay, so I see there is an O-ring. I don't wanna lose this. There's probably another one uh, where is it? One here, one here. It should be two, one in each side. So maybe the other one is... Oh, the other O-ring is right here. So I'll, I'll get this O-ring back in place. Don't lose these O-rings. Yeah, just two O-rings. And I believe that this... This all goes into a, a same channel here because it's full, it goes from one side to the other, right? And they, there is just two connections here, two connections. And this is the O-ring, the yellow O-ring here that seals the casing. All right, so I'm gonna get this out of the way now. Pull this motor, uh oh You see, right? You just noticed that the oil just leaked from here. So definitely have to put some more oil here later. But now I need to remove the motor. So that's the only thing I want to get out. 
is this motor here. And then for that, there is two bolts, one here and one here. And once I remove these bolts, I'll probably be able to uh, lose the motor. So I'll just un unclick. Get this out of. Okay, this and this. All right, so here I have the motor. It's probably bad, I don't know why, but it's probably bad. I can try to fix this or just remote, remove and replace. Probably gonna go with the second alternative, uh, maybe do a clean. If it doesn't get, uh, oh, I mean, if it doesn't get to work, I'll just purchase a new motor uh, and replace the motor. So I'm now going to unscrew this two two little ones here. Whoops. Oh, I'll put that right here. one almost out and then the second one right here okay there you go because I know there is a motor not the original one but a replacement motor that you can buy I, I want to make sure everything's the same so I will remove this and get back in a minute. All right, so I was able to remove this. And uh, as you can see, the motor goes like this. And you gotta be careful. There is a couple of parts here that you probably you gotta remove. There is a gasket right here, it goes right here. And then also need to unbolt these two bolts because this bracket here you need uh, when you get the other motor and not sure why but this motor is leaking so maybe the oil got everywhere maybe this is why the motor is not working this motor here uh, I believe it's brushed and a brushed motor uh, if the contacts are not working well, it doesn't work. Basically, that's what it is. It, it does spin freely, so I don't think there is anything wrong there, but maybe some of the connections are not very good. So I can use some uh, contact cleaner and try to clean the contacts here, see if it spins again, and then maybe reinstall before buying a new motor. That's what I'm gonna try next. Okay, so now I have here two things I'm gonna try. Contact cleaner and WD-40. I'm gonna start with this. I'll set this aside, I don't need this right now. So I'm just going to spray WD-40 everywhere. Try to get this clean. So it's going to leak a lot of uh, dark stuff. Well, now I can see the copper. It was so dark. It got really messy. but maybe maybe the motor is not bad, maybe it's just dirty. So instead of buying a new one, I'll try to fix this. I like, I like to fix stuff, not to buy stuff all the time. So now I'm gonna go with this contact cleaner. There is a lot of dirt inside, a lot of uh, black stuff coming out. So maybe the motor is really 
not going to work but i'll try so i'll connect this back to the power there 12 volts and see if it runs okay let's try just just before you know throwing this away i'll do another try so let's get this here and then here oh, okay don't remember really this uh the side where it goes but that's well i don't think it really matters uh because it's just going to be turning one side or to the other side so I'll plug this here here and here okay i'll let this record and i'll try to to move this motor let's see if it moves okay so it looks like i don't need to buy any water that smoke totally fine this is really it's just burning through you know the cleaner that i just uh, spray the motor with but the motor is spinning that's that's great dude great news I, I probably just gotta put everything all together and fill up the the oil tank and it's gonna work so i'll, I'll keep running the motor you see smoke coming out this is not going to burn the motor i done this before trust me this is gonna work let's go I know it looks bad, but trust me, this is not going to kill the motor. This is just the oil being burned out. It's gonna be fine. It really looks bad, I know. You see now, the smoke is pretty much gone. So it's going to smoke a little bit more, but eventually it's going to work. Motor is spinning, no, no smoke anymore. It's shaking like this because I'm going from one direction to the other, kind of going up and down. There is no smoke anymore. Motor, it is running. It's not hot at all. All right, good deal. So I'm going to put everything back together, see if uh, it's gonna work. All right, I did notice an issue here. If we can focus right there, right there in the gasket. This gasket is supposed to seal all of this area here, but because I think it was over tight, I don't know, from the factory or whatever, I don't think when I press this, I'm not sure if this gasket's going to be able to seal this corner here because the gasket is kind of gone and you see a little bit of a depression here. So I don't know. I'll try anyway, but most likely I'll have to find a gasket, a gasket like this. I don't know where I can find this, but I'll have to find out. So let's, let's see. All right, so I 
I, I push, I pull this up by accident. I can't see shit here. But I'll, I'll put this back right on top. Funny that there isn't a gasket here. Push this back in place. I'm spilling oil everywhere. God. All right, so it's it's in the right place now. Let's get this bolt here. Yeah, this is not as simple as it looks, I can tell. But I'll get this done. Get this back in here. Another one goes in the back here, which is harder to put together, but let's go. All right, so I'll do my best here trying to uh, record uh, me putting this back together. But basically, as I remember, this goes here. And then one of these bolts goes right here. Get has to get this one here. hard to align the holes. Uh, doesn't have a lot of space here. Oops. And again, you gotta be careful. There are there are a couple of gaskets. I'll try this now. I got one in so then the second one should should not be that hard so get this one now where is that little tool right here okay, got it got it it's in the right place unfortunately most of the fluid has leaked I don't know how this is gonna go, but okay, this is right in the right position. This is 
and get back into place. I don't know how you measure the level here. But, and then now I'm going to get these wires out. And I'll just connect this here. wires there I connect everything I know there isn't a lot of fluid in there so I need to fill the fluid back but I'll just do a little test see if the pump is running yes it is running and I will show you the cylinder is moving So this is good, it's working for sure. I need to put some fluids back on and I'll do that. Uh, but so far, it looks like it's uh, working. So let's keep on uh, reinstalling everything, okay? I'll put this back here and then bolt everything back in place. I have an access port right here where I can refill the fluid. I don't know really about how I would know the level. Uh, I can't really see where I can look for that. Maybe I just gotta top this out on top and then it's, this is what it gotta be. So let's see, I'll put this back together and come back in a minute. All right, so I was able to fully extend this to a point that I can actually reinsert this pin not quite there yet so a little bit more should be good to go now pin is back right there I'll do the same thing to the other side Quite not there yet, so let's go a little bit more. Okay, okay, now maybe too much. Maybe now it's just about right. There you go. I need to reinsert the pin. Go like this. Have these two pins here, they need to go back in here. Okay, one. I'll do the other side, same thing. Done. So now I just take this off. All right, so basically I just fixed this. Yes, I need to add fluid there somehow. I just let's figure it out.
All right, so it's working. Looks like problem fixed. It's working. Very good, very, very good. All right, so again, it's probably, it became a long video as I talked about, I was going to need to replace that motor. It was just a matter of cleaning it well. It's working now. I'm very satisfied that I got to fix this without spending extra no money at all. It took me a couple of hours, but I got it done. It's working, it shows all the way up. If I go down. Well, actually I gotta turn this key. So if I go down, all the way down, it's moving down and it's moving up. So basically it's working. Very good. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. Leave your comment, like, dislike. I appreciate. Thank you.